Affinity version 2.6 has just been released, and in this video, I'll show you the biggest changes you should know about. Let's get started. My favorite update in version 2.6 is the new object selection tool, which uses machine learning to make selections. But when you first try to use it, a pop-up will appear that says you need to download some extra files before you can use it. To download these files, click on Settings. Then from here, you can download the files. Now we can use the new selection tool, but before that, I want to mention three important things. Number one, AI is optional in Affinity Photo, which is why we need to download those extra files. If you don't download those files, then you'll keep your work 100% AI-free. Number two, the machine learning models are pre-trained and they don't use any of your data for further training. And number three, all machine learning is done on device, so your data will always be safely stored with you. Considering the behavior of a certain other company, it's good to see Affinity's approach to AI. So with all that being said, let's try the new selection tool. After clicking on the tool, Affinity will take a few seconds to analyze your photo. After that, you can hover your cursor over different parts of the photo, and Affinity will outline the objects it's identified. Then, you can just click on one of the objects, and Affinity will automatically make a selection of it. And from here, this is just a regular selection, so I'll apply a mask to remove the background of the photo. And just like that, the background is gone. Now I'll turn the mask on and off so that we can see if the automatic selection did a good job. Overall, I'd say it looks pretty good. There are a few spots I'd probably clean up, but overall, great job, Affinity. But now I'm going to delete this mask so I can show you another feature of the object selection tool. As we saw before, we can hover over different objects to preview our selection. But if we hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, then we can select individual parts of an object. So instead of selecting the entire woman, we could select her skin, her hair, or her cardigan. Now with just her cardigan selected, we can easily change its color by applying an HSL adjustment. And here's a before and after of the color change. Now, before we go to the next update, I have two last things to mention. First, if you come up to the Select menu, you'll find an option for Select Subject. This option will automatically analyze your photo and make a selection of the subject. Compared to the Object Selection tool, the benefit of this option is that it can be used in macros, or you could even make a custom keyboard shortcut for it from Affinity Settings. And finally, I need to mention a bit of bad news. Unfortunately for people using Macs, Affinity's new selection tool can only be used on Macs that have Apple Silicon as opposed to older Macs with Intel chips. I was pretty disappointed to hear this, but luckily for people using Windows, you'll be able to use the new selection tool regardless of what hardware you have. Okay, now let's move on to the next big update. In Affinity Publisher, we can now make spreads that have more than two pages. First, click the Add Pages button. Then choose the number of pages you want to add. Then at the bottom, we can choose how the pages will be added. Flow Pages is the default option and is the normal way to add pages to your document. But now in version 2.6, there's also Extend Spread, which will add more pages to the spread that you have selected. And just like that, we've created a three-page spread. This has been a highly requested feature, so it's great to see this update to Affinity Publisher. Up next is another update to Affinity Publisher, which is the ability to anchor objects to the spine. To see how this works, let's take a look at this turtle. Would you say it's on the left side of the page, 
Or would you say it's this far away from the spine of the book? Well, both ways are correct, and it just depends on how you want to look at it. Let's see what happens to the turtle if I add another page to the beginning of this document. You can see the turtle has moved from the left side of the page to the right because Affinity kept it the same distance from the spine. That might be what you want, but if it's not, here's what to do. First, I'll undo the new page. Then I'll come to the settings for the Pages panel. From here, come to Page Move Options and turn off Anchor Towards Spine. Then I'll add another page to the beginning of this document. This time, the turtle stayed on the left side of the page, but is now a different distance from the spine. So feel free to use anchor towards spine or not, depending on how you want to structure your document. Another Affinity Publisher update is the ability to turn off reflow pages. To see how this works, I made a document of my favorite animals, with the name of the animal on the left pages and a photo of the animal on the right pages. But let's say I want to add another page to this document to make a table of contents. In that case, I'd click the Add Pages button and add one more page after page number two. Now I have a page for my table of contents, but all of the other pages got messed up. The animal names and their photos are no longer in the same spread, so I'm going to undo my new page. Now that we see the problem, let's see how the new update works. First, come up to the settings for the pages panel, then come down to page move options and turn off reflow pages. And now let's see what happens when I add a new page for my table of contents. Now I have a new page while all of the other pages stay together. So by turning off reflow pages, we can add new pages to our document without affecting the other spreads. But sometimes you don't need reflow turned off for your entire document, just part of it. So let me undo the new page and then turn reflow pages back on so everything is back to normal. Now as an example, let's say I only want to keep the duck pages together. In that case, I could right click on them and choose Spread Properties. From here, I can turn off reflow just for this spread. Now from these brackets, we know that only this spread has reflow turned off. So if I add a new page for my table of contents, then all the pages in my document will shift except for the duck pages because that spread has reflow turned off. This is a great update for advanced users of Affinity Publisher, but for everyone else, I recommend you keep reflow pages turned on or you might run into unexpected problems. Now let's see some updates to Affinity Designer, starting with the pencil tool, which now has a smoothness slider. To see how it works, I'll make a little drawing. As you can see, this line has quite a few nodes and it's not very smooth. But if I increase the smoothness to 100%, Affinity will smooth out the line by removing and repositioning nodes. The next update is also to the pencil tool. You can now choose how far away you want auto close to activate. So if I select near, then when I draw something, my shape will close itself if I come near the start of the drawing. But if I delete this drawing and change auto close to far, then when I make a drawing, Affinity will close it when I'm farther away from the beginning. And while we're on the subject of vectors, there's also been an improvement to the node tool. Now we can double click on a smooth node and it will turn into a sharp node. And of course, if we double click on a sharp node, then it will turn into a smooth node. 
We can also double click on a node handle to delete just that handle while keeping the other half of the node smooth. In all the Affinity apps, the color picker has been improved. Now, when you sample a color, the color is instantly applied to the object you had selected. But if you prefer the old behavior, you can just hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, and the sampled color will be stored in this little circle, which you can click on whenever you're ready to apply the color to your object. The next update is to brushes. Now in the brushes panel, there's a search box you can use to find specific brushes. Just be aware that this will only search for brushes within the category you have selected, not all of the brushes you have installed. Version 2.6 also adds support for additional raw files. So now you can edit raw photos from any of these devices. And in Affinity Publisher, there's a new way to move pages. You can still click and drag to move a page, but now you can right-click on a page and select Move Pages. From here, you can move or copy a page to anywhere in your document. In Affinity Publisher, we also got a new size option for page previews. Just open the settings for the Pages panel and select Extra Large Thumbnails. The page previews get bigger right away, but they can actually get even larger. Just make the panel wider, and the previews will continue to fill the space no matter how large you make the panel. Affinity Publisher also got a new Reading Order panel, which allows you to control how screen readers will read your document. Like all of Affinity's panels, this new panel can be found in the Window menu. All of the text in your document will automatically be added to the panel in the order that the text appears in the document. So the text at the top of the page will be read first, followed by the text that comes underneath it. And for images, you can use the Tags panel to add a description for screen readers. That description will automatically be added to the Reading Order panel. Then you can click and drag to rearrange these layers to choose the order they'll be read when people use a screen reader. And for those of you that use data merge, you can now use QR codes. Just make a QR code and then open the data merge manager. Then import your data, which in my case is an Excel file of the 10 most popular websites. Then go to the context toolbar to change the QR code's data type. From here, select Data Merge. Then press OK. Now we can generate the data merge. Now each of the 10 websites has been added to a QR code. So as I select different QR codes, you can see in the context toolbar that they each take people to one of the 10 websites I had listed in my Excel file. And finally, version 2.6 has added an easy way to see which master page you have applied. Just right-click on a master page and give it a color. Now a red line has appeared above my pages because they have Master A applied to them, which I made red. But if I give Master B a different color, and then apply Master B to some of the pages in my document, then Master B's color will appear above those pages, allowing me to quickly see which pages have which master applied to them. But if you don't want to see these colors anymore, just open the settings of the Pages panel and turn off Show Master Page Tags. So those are my favorite changes in Affinity version 2.6. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited for, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.